Hey everybody, Last Outrider here with part two of my Fortress Monastery on Titan series. Or Citadel on Titan. I know you all enjoyed part one so much and that's why you're here. Yeah, okay. So now we left off with uh, the Chamber of Purity, I believe, which is where the purifiers spend their time. Now before I start, I want to say one thing. I've always been confused by the purifiers because honestly, I thought they were pariahs, you know, the soulless uh, people who, who, who basically all psychers dislike, but it turns out they're not. That being said, they did show that the Grey Knights do have pariahs and that possibly these gray knights were gray knights that were excommunicated from the brotherhood for some bad thing they did <clears throat> and they worked off in the dead fields so that's what i found interesting in this until then let's get let's get right to it the chambers of purity the purifiers are those gray knights whose very being is anathema to demons. Their psychic presence, not just unpalpable to creatures of the warp, but actively harmful. See what I mean? Tell me that didn't sound like a pariah, but apparently it's not. No more than a few dozen in number. The purifiers maintain the chambers of purity, keeping its demonic relics and restless spirits from stirring to life it is here that the most twisted trophies of the gray knights are locked away those profane objects too dangerous to study or hang in the hall of champions books blades and bones held immobile in gilded stasis caskets fill niches around the chamber the ancient technology and the powerful will of the purifiers keeping the demonic artifacts dormant. The Iron Grimnor, a sacred tome pinned by Malkador and kept safe by the Supreme Grand Master, tells of another reason for the existence of the Chambers of Purity. It hints at a great evil imprisoned under the Citadel, Something buried there by the Emperor during the unification of soul system. Something that could not be killed. For this reason, the Chambers of Purity must always be guarded by at least one purifier, lest the evil awaken from its millennia-long slumber. <laughs> they really give no hint as to what that thing is. Uh, I, I I know he talked about they talked about the emperor slaying the uh, void dragon on Mars or locking that up, but that wasn't during the unification wars. That was when he was called the knight instead of the emperor. So maybe one day we'll find uh or maybe it was the demon that um corrupted Horus. That was another one. I don't know. We'll find out maybe one day, because that demon will probably end up being Bellacor. I'm almost certain of it. <clears throat> the Dead Fields are next. When a Grey Knight falls in battle and his body can be recovered, his brothers carry him back to Titan. His body will then be carefully prepared for burial, his gene seed removed, and his flesh washed of the taint and filth of war. Specially blessed servitors will then paint the 666 words of sanctity upon the body of the dead space marine until he is covered in fine script from head to toe. He will then be encased in his burial armor, a suit of silvered plate mail, and his hands wrapped around a heavy steel sword inscribed with his deeds this is very important because one thing i always said that was a huge waste of the gray knights is that they always seem to have been buried with their armor and their weapons when you hear descriptions of the dead fields in the past and i was saying wait 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 these guys have the highest technology of the imperium these 
incredibly insanely rare force weapons on top of that and when you die they just bury it in the ground seems like a waste this little segment here specifies that does not happen they get a burial armor which is uh, silvered plate mail not power armor and they get an iron sword with their name inscribed on it not the force weapon they carry around isn't that kind of cool now now i feel now i feel better <clears throat> let's see where were we wrapped around a heavy steel sword inscribed with his deeds his matchless arms and armor aegis suit nemesis force weapon and storm bolter are taken back to the chapter's armory for future generations of gray knights there you go there you go though they will always bear his name tiny spidery scrawl coils around the grips and barrels documenting hundreds of names almost invisible to the naked eye okay so all gray knight equipment even a bolter carries the names and deeds of every gray knight that used it before so armed and armored the gray knight will be carried out to the dead fields accompanied by a handful of his brothers and a dozen chapter serfs chanting prayers for his departed soul the dead fields are a vast frozen tomb at the foot of mount anarch its chambers and alcoves carved from the cold dead rock of titan the dead gray knights is sealed in this icy grave beside thousands of his fallen kin there he will rest as long as the citadel stands often when a gray knight perishes his body will be lost to the chapter torn asunder by demons or incinerated by the baleful fires of the warp in these cases the gray knight's burial armor will be interred in his place and the empty silver suit grasping a blade bearing the space marines name nice huh it's good to know next in part three we are going to deal with the chamber of trials Ooh, very very scary okay i will see you next time bye